From the St. Francis Yacht Club in San Francisco, this is the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon, hosted by Ron Young. Welcome to the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon, live from the virtual grill room of the St. Francis Yacht Club. We hope that you and your family are safe, sheltering in place in a comfortable environment. And we look forward to greeting you back in the Yacht Club just as soon as conditions permit. Our speaker today, like yours truly, was born in San Francisco. She was born in St. Mary's Hospital and as a young child moved to Tiburon, California. When at the when in the fifth grade, she took a red and white fleet trip across the bay from Tiburon to San Francisco, and that changed her life. She's been aquatically oriented ever since, and after serving a couple of stints with the San Francisco Maritime Historical Park Association, she returned in 2020 as the CEO. Welcome, Darlene Plumtree, to the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon. Thank you, Ron. Well, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about the fascinating history of the San Francisco Maritime National Park Association. I have to tell you, it's it's really uh, a San Francisco story. It's, it's kind of a long history, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of details today, but I am going to tell you about some of the more colorful highlights of the history of, of the association and what is now the San Francisco Maritime National Historical Park, beginning in 1949 to 2019. And the reason I chose those dates is because the association was actually formed right after 1949. It was in 1950. But the building, what is now known as the Maritime Museum Building, was acquired in 1949. And there's a, a story behind that, of course, uh, as well as other parts of the collection, the Valclutha that you see in the background, which was originally known as the Pacific Queen, was incorporated into the park at a later date. This is a view of the Embarcadero in the 1920s and the waterfront from 1848 to 1957. So this is the area that we're talking about and kind of the way it looked at that time. It was a bustling waterfront with a lot of trade, a lot of uh, cargo container ships coming in and out of port. It was a real working maritime waterfront. And as you could see the ferry building, all the vessels in port. Round about 1939, San Francisco Barria hosted the Golden Gate International Exhibition on Treasure Island. Uh, this was really important event in the Bay Area. The fair was a wonderland of maritime exhibits about trade and transportation, economics, and lots of big dreams. There were steam trains, pageants, even a new wonder called television. It was the way of the future. There were two San Franciscans in particular who were really interested in this exhibit. One was Alma Spreckles, Big Alma as she was known. She was the wife of the sugar king Adolf Spreckles and she fell in love with the ship models and sea paintings and maritime artifacts that were exhibited at that fair. There was also Carl Corden who was a sailor, he was a journalist, he was an adventurer, and he had an idea for collecting things as well, but it wasn't artifacts, it was actually ships. And so he had a little different idea than Alma had about what a maritime museum might look like. But in 1949, uh, Alma was able to obtain uh, access to the museum, to this building, the Aquatic Park Casino. The casino was a concession uh, in the 1930s. There was some public outcry about that. As usual with all public buildings, there's uh, lots of controversy. And so it was empty for a year. The army took it over in the 1940s. And Alma saw an opportunity to get that building when it was vacated by the army. So Alma wasn't really big on the idea of collecting ships. She was more interested in the artifacts and the ship models. And she and Carl kind of had a little bit of a disagreement about what this maritime museum might look like. So uh, Carl Cordham decided to approach a friend, Scott Newhall, who was then an editor at the San Francisco Chronicle. Scott was a sailor. He was also from a 
old California family, Henry Mayo Newhall was a, a, one of the railroad founders uh, of one of the railroads that came here to the Bay Area. And he knew a lot of people, he loved the idea. And so he jumped on Carl Cordham's bandwagon and uh, went to Paul Smith, who was then the editor of the Chronicle. Paul Smith was very influential. He had a lot of political contacts. He was also very uh, enthusiastic about the idea. And so they kind of formed a group um, of newspaper men from the Chronicle, along with Carl Cordham. And they came up with this idea for the aquatic park that was called Project X. Here are the three fellows at, in the museum after it's opened, but uh, here is the board. So there were a number of influential people who were recruited to in this effort to create a maritime museum. And several of those people are here uh, in this photograph, including Scott Newhall, Ed Zielinski, who um, was known for Main Street Properties in Tiburon, uh, Harry Lundberg, who was with the Sailors Union of the Pacific, um, Alma Spreckles, David Nelson, who was a newspaper man and a mover and shaker, uh, Carl Cordham, and a number of other executives were involved in creating this park. There was also people from the Matson Corporation, uh, Matson Lines. There were folks from American President Lines, always involved with this organization. So there was a big effort to preserve some element of that working waterfront of those images that we saw earlier in the presentation. This was uh, illustrations that were created by Hubert Buell. He was an illustrator for the San Francisco Chronicle. And uh, he was on board to help create visual images of what this park might look like. It's, it's not much different than it looks today. Uh, the ships are in a little different location, but Carl did have a vision for the ships, the historic ships. And those were acquired one by one. Here's a view from Hyde Street, the Buena Vista Cafe. And of course, the first ship that was acquired was the Balclutha. Carl really wanted that ship. He really thought that we needed to preserve the working waterfront and uh, that ship had quite a history. It was, it was originally built in Scotland. Uh, it was used for transporting cargo and later on was renamed as Star of Alaska. It was used in the Alaska Packers. It would go up to Alaska and uh, bring salmon and fish back uh, to San Francisco, to the Bay Area. My grandfather sailed on that ship in the, in the 1930s. Later on, after it was put out of commercial use, it was acquired by a woman who renamed it the Pacific Queen. And it was actually used in movies and, and it was kind of an attraction, but Carl saw it as a real example of, you know, the working West Coast working maritime. And so he was able to acquire that so this is an image of 1951. This is the opening of the Maritime Museum building. And if you look really closely, I mean, you can see they had a train there on Beach Street. I'm not exactly sure how they got that train there. Well, there used to be a track, the Embarcadero track. But uh, it was a huge, huge opening. And um, anybody who was anybody at all in San Francisco was there to see the opening of this museum building. These are some of today, some of the artifacts, ships, small boats that are in the museum. This is probably a little bigger than, than Alma had in mind in terms of models. This is actually a real boat. Um, we also right now have the uh, mermaid, the Kenichi Hori uh, boat in that, in the lobby of the museum building. So Kenichi Hori has made three trips, solo sails across uh, the Pacific Ocean. He first came here in the 1960s uh, without a visa. And um, the mayor at the time was Mayor Christopher, uh, thought he was really, it was remarkable that he made this adventure uh, across the Pacific, the sail at the age of 19 years old and uh, granted him a 30 day visa so he could stay in San Francisco. He's returned twice 
two or three times at least uh, since that time. The most recent time was this last March uh, where he uh, left from Tiburon, actually Tiburon Yacht Club, and sailed uh, to Tokyo. And so he arrived uh, in July of 2022. So we were really happy uh, to have him here and have a reception for him and very happy that he made it all the way over at the age of 84 years old. It's pretty remarkable. So in addition to the museum and the collections and the ships that are at the San Francisco Maritime National Historical Park, the association also acquired in 1982 a World War II submarine, the USS Pampanito. And the USS Pampanito is probably one of the best restored submarines in the country. It's been in movies, it played starring roles in documentary films. And every year we have hundreds of thousands of visitors come to see what it was like to be aboard a World War II submarine. And I have to tell you, it's pretty cramped quarters. If you've ever been inside there, um, you have to imagine 80 guys living on that submarine, you know. Uh, 80 guys, 80 days without a shower. This submarine was involved in uh, one particular uh, historical event. There was a, a Japanese uh, ship that was transporting uh, prisoners of war. And so the Pampanito actually torpedoed that ship. And they realized after they torpedoed it that there were... Um, prisoners of war from Australia and England out in the water floating around saying, ask, you know, asking for help. So, this, so the Pampanito went back and picked up a number of those guys that were on that, on that vessel uh, that had sunk. And uh, every year, uh, at least during the time I was here, every, not every year, but every few years, there had been, there was a reunion at Pier 45 of all those uh, veterans. So it was very moving. I mean, those were experiences that are just beyond words. Um, and so uh, we like to share, share their story and all the sacrifices that were made during that time in that war. So at Pier 45, we have a little museum space and event space. And we share that with the SS Jeremiah O'Brien, which is also at Pier 45. The association um, is the official park partner of the San Francisco Maritime National Historical Park. The park wasn't always a national park. It changed hands a few times. It uh, was run by the state of California for a while, um, but in 1988, it became its own separate San Francisco Maritime National Park. It was so specialized, it really needed to be its own park. And so we are the official park partner. We continue to support the park in preservation efforts, education, and philanthropy. This is Pier 45, where we have events from time to time. This is actually a, a sample of the collections from the Pampanito. There was a, a couple, one of the veterans that was on the submarine had a, it was a fiance at the time, would send him letters almost every day. And she was an illustrator and sent these beautiful letters to him with these gorgeous illustrations. We have those in our collection. So we run education programs at Hyde Street Pier. Unfortunately, of course, during COVID, we had to stop the programs, but we are looking forward to reinstating them in 2023. But I can tell you almost everybody in the Bay Area has had some experience with the program on the, on the Valclutha. Either they've stay, they stayed on when they were kids, they came back as tall sailors in part of, as part of the program with their children. And now we actually have grandparents coming back with their kids for the program. So um, it's, it's really become part of the culture of San Francisco education. So here is an image of the park as it is today. Here we have the Maritime Museum building with the beautiful murals. And uh, there are exhibits on the first floor. Uh, here is the Balclutha. We also have the Eureka ferry boat. The Eureka is the largest floating vessel, wooden vessel in the world. 
really quiet, and they're all national landmarks. Here is another view of the park today with the ships over here at Hyde Street Pier, the rowing and swim clubs here, the Maritime Museum, and the Sea Scout base here. And you see all these vessels anchored out here. Lots of people have learned how to swim and how to sail at the aquatic park. So it was a great effort by a number of people. Uh, and today we have this beautiful park that everybody can enjoy. It's one of the last original uh, places on the waterfront where you can walk right down onto the beach and get in the water. And uh, every day I see lots of families uh, with kids going, you know, having fun on the beach there on a nice sunny day. And it's really uh, makes me feel very happy to work here and see that. So Darlene, um, talk a little bit about the collection. How many photographs are in the National Park Association collection? You're asking a tough question. Oh, I, on, oh it's millions. We have the largest collection in the Park Service of artifacts, images. The museum also manages a library that's in uh, Fort Mason. Can you talk a little bit about that extension of the Park Association? Yes, it's the Maritime uh, Research Center here in Building E in Lower Fort Mason. Um, it's on the third floor by appointment only. Gina Barty is the librarian here and she's just really uh, so knowledgeable about maritime history and the collections. There are people who come to do research here for many different reasons, for dissertations, for genealogy. Um, uh, some people come here to find out whether or not their uh, ancestors sailed around the Horn. We have all kinds of ship logs and all kinds of information for, uh, for a for people who do are doing maritime research. So talk a little bit about Hyde Street Pier. Show on the graphic. So here's Hyde Street Pier. This pier really supports many of the larger artifacts that we have in our collection. So if you were to come down uh, Hyde Street on the cable car, you would end up actually in the Victorian Park, which is right about here. And Victorian Park, uh, leads you right down to the Hyde Street Pier here, where we have at least nine national landmark vessels berthed. Those vessels include the Balclutha, uh, the Eureka, the C.A. Thayer, the Alma Scow Schooner. There's also the Hercules Tugboat. Each of the vessels the museum manages have special, unique historic characteristics. The steam tugboat is a fascinating um, craft. It's literally a steam tugboat. Yes, it is steam powered and it requires special engineers um, and special types of volunteers to work on that vessel. There's a very active volunteer program there. Yeah, what's amazing is the fleet of boats managed by the Maritime National Park Association, it seemed to me they're each selected for their unique historic qualities. Um, you know, the, the Balclutha, um, the Hercules. The Thayer, which was the um, the uh, lumber schooner that uh, was used to bring lumber back to San Francisco after the 1906 earthquake uh, to rebuild the city. Yes, each one has a specific, uh, was chosen for a specific reason. The Eureka ferry boat um, used to carry 3,500 passengers back and forth from San Francisco to Sausalito every day. That's half of the population of Sausalito. So, uh, so it, uh, and it's also the largest floating vessel, wooden vessel in the world. Uh, so it has a really unique place in, in maritime history. The Balclutha was, you know, very, you know, the Alaska Packers here on the West Coast between San Francisco and Alaska was, you know, operating in the 1930s uh, with, you know, canned salmon. And uh, you can go actually to the pier and see the exhibits. Uh, that reflect what the vessels were used for. Tell me hours and days of operation. The San Francisco Maritime National Historical Park is open seven days a week from 10 to four. Uh, the vessels are, you can walk on the pier, the vessels are open, um, but due to COVID restrictions, we're not allowed to have visitors below decks, but you can walk on top of the decks of the ships. Talk a little bit about the Sea Shanty Program. 
One of the ways we support the park, uh, especially during COVID, um, we were trying to think of ways that we could maintain uh, connections with our constituents and our and our members and donors. Uh, and we collaborated with the National Park Service and came up with several virtual programs, uh, one of them being uh, monthly sea shanties, which we have every month. We have a sea shanty program coming up, uh, virtual sea shanty program coming up this Saturday, July 16th at 11 a.m. You can go to our website at maritime.org and get the link to join in or just watch. Uh, there are signups. You can participate to sing or you can just listen. Over the last two years, we have developed a real following, global following. We have people join from all over the world from Scotland, from England, from Ireland, from France, from Yugoslavia, <laughs> from uh, uh, everywhere, really, uh, Australia, New Zealand. Um, uh, it's pretty amazing. We're, we're always amazed to see uh, who joins in. It's always different. Every week, every month is always different programs. So it's um, worth tuning in every month to see who's there. We have a a virtual sea music concert on Saturday, July 23rd at 12 noon. You can also go to our website at maritime.org and get a link to, uh, to watch that concert. It's a fiddle summit um, between two fiddlers in different locations. Um, so it should be very interesting. You know, uh, anybody who goes to Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco it, and walks to the western edge of it toward Aquatic Park, you then turn right to go down Hyde Street Pier, you see this amazing set of exhibits uh, that you're describing that the Maritime Museum and the Association uh, manages. What, what is the number of visitors annually you get to Hyde Street Pier? Well, the number, I can tell you the number of visitors to the park is over 4 million every year. Four million visitors to the park. That's wonderful. As you know, uh, as a young sea scout, we sailed all around that harbor. And to sail up next to the Balcluth uh, in a small boat as a little kid is uh, was like real, really amazing. And then I got to go on and, and do rigging. Lots of us young guys in our teens mm -hmm. did rigging on the Balcluth. So I find it to be so fun that the city in its uh, great sort of artistic insight has made uh, the, a whole pier available as a homage to the maritime heritage of San Francisco. And few people recognize what a gem the aquatic park is. This is literally a publicly accessible piece of beach. People can park, easily park and play around on the beach, go swimming, go boating, do all those kinds of things right at aquatic park. So, and this is at the base of uh, the intersection of Bay Street and Van Ness. It's great for you to give us a kind of an overview of the park and the work of the association. If people want to give money to the association, Darlene, how would they do so? Go to our website at maritime.org and push the donate button. <laughs> well, how big is the staff of the association? Uh, right now we are at 12. That's wonderful. This whole facility, all these activities are managed by just 12, a staff of 12. So I know that you keep it nice and lean. So we, we get through the tough times of the pandemic. How are you faring in the post-pandemic world? We're, uh, you know, trying to reinstate many of our programs that were discontinued during COVID. I should also add that um, it's not just the association staff that maintains all the facilities. It's also the park staff. And there are 70 park employees. So it's not just 12 of us maintaining all the ships. They, they really do the maintenance and take care of the, of the facilities. So folks can come down here and have lunch in the Victorian Park and have a nice stroll on Hyde Street Pier and uh, enjoy all the historic vessels. They can also walk over to the beautiful little sandy beach. It's, it's such a private, beautiful little spot. Um, and, you know, lots of families there, uh, swimmers. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, uh, aquatic life out there. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll see a seal swimming around out there as well. Bocce uh, courts, you have bocce courts too? We have bocce courts uh, out here. And 
Yeah, and you can also take a walk out on the Muni Pier, which is that huge pier right here that extends around the western side of the park. This is a fabulous view. If you walk out here, you feel like you are on a cruise ship looking back at the most beautiful city in the world, San Francisco. Darlene Plumtree, a native San Franciscan, CEO of the San Francisco Maritime National Park Association. Thanks very much for being our guest on the Windsor Yachting Luncheon. Thank you, Ron, for the invitation. presentation of the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon.